In this video, I want to dispel three more myths and really discuss what hyperbaric oxygen can and really cannot do. So myth number one, hyperbaric oxygen can cure everything. I actually think this is one of the biggest misconceptions that is holding the industry back. Most medical professionals or researchers for that matter cannot get over the idea that one device could cure everything because one device cannot cure everything. In fact, one of the things I say all the time about hyperbaric oxygen is it cures nothing. At the same time, oxygen is a critical molecule required for almost all of our cells to do the functions that we ask them to do every minute of every day. So as a result of increasing oxygen levels inside of the body, we often see certain physiological responses that are very consistent. We see increased ATP production or increased cellular energy. We see a reduction in inflammation. We see an increase in growth factors that lead to healing and regeneration of cells and tissues. We see improved immune responses and we see an improved ability to fight infection. We also see improved detoxification processes. In other words, as the cells get more oxygen, they're capable of doing more work. And each of our systems, as they increase their work capacity, function better. It increases cellular and tissue performance. This results in a myriad of different patients reporting so many different and varied responses. Whether it was fighting an infection or recovering from trauma or injury or surgery, or for patients faced with autoimmune diseases or neurodegenerative diseases who also report improvements in symptoms and improvements in quality of life. To an untrained eye, it may appear that hyperbaric is the cure for everything, but most definitely it is not. It is just a foundational tool that delivers a required nutrient that all of our cells need for our bodies to heal, repair, and regenerate. In fact, if we narrow down the overwhelming majority of diseases and conditions, it comes down to three things, controlling inflammation, improving mitochondrial function, and then stimulating the repair and regenerative mechanisms of our cells and tissues. And it just so happens that hyperbaric actually plays a role, a significant role in all three of those areas. And so, so many different patients, with so many varied diagnoses all seem to respond favorably to this tool, but it most certainly is not the cure. Myth number two, hyperbaric is great for weight loss. We've actually done an entire video on this topic, but just to summarize it because I hear it so often, questions like, how many calories do I burn additionally inside the chamber? Or does hyperbaric stimulate my metabolism and lead to some amount of weight loss? And the thing I wanna stress here is that weight loss is a very complex conversation. There's a hormonal conversation in terms of hormone balance. There's an inflammatory conversation with regard to our immune system and the balance and regulation of our immune system. There's a caloric quality conversation, not just the number in and number out, but what are the calories actually made out of and how does our body utilize those calories, particularly in terms of macronutrients, fats, carbohydrates, and proteins. And then there's the cellular metabolism. How does your body utilize oxygen and the fuel that you're eating in order to create energy? So the first thing I really want to say about this is hyperbaric is not the cure for weight loss. In fact, while I do think it improves cellular metabolism, which we'll talk about in a minute, by itself, I don't think it will have much of an impact on weight gain or weight loss almost at all. And even if we wanted to use hyperbaric to improve cellular metabolism, which we certainly could and should, it has to be part of a greater program that also balances those other areas, depending on what challenges a person has, whether they're metabolic challenges, hormonal challenges, inflammatory challenges, or their relationship to food and exercise. So this conversation around weight loss has to include all of these different areas, not just hyperbaric. We'll get right back to the video, but real quick, I wanted to let you know that if you're new to hyperbaric and you're really trying to learn more about hyperbaric oxygen and its appropriate uses, I wrote a book, Oxygen Under Pressure, which is available on Amazon, and it goes into the details of what is hyperbaric, how does it work, why does it work, why is it so powerful for so many of the things that it helps, and how do we use it appropriately and use it safely. And so if you're interested in that, we're gonna add a link in the description below so that you can buy that book today. All right, now back to the video. Now, on the hyperbaric side, hyperbaric can improve cellular metabolism. In other words, when we eat our food and we're creating energy, we need to oxidize that food. So we bring in air in order to extract the oxygen. We eat food in order to produce energy-dense molecules. And then we essentially oxidize that fuel in order to create cellular power and cellular energy. It takes quite a bit more oxygen to burn fat molecules than it does to burn carbohydrates. 
And as a result, we can use hyperbaric to increase our fat metabolism, but not without also changing our diet. We would also have to lower our glucose and carbohydrate intake, increase our fat intake, and start to shift our bodies into a fat burning mode. And then we could utilize increased levels of oxygen to really improve the rate at which we're burning that fat for energy. In some of our more chronically ill patients, we use strategies like that where we're shifting someone's metabolism into something more of a ketogenic diet, which is a very heavily fat burning diet. And then we utilize ketogenic diet and fasting along with hyperbaric to really drive the fat burning processes inside of our cells. But again, alone, this is not a tool for just generic weight loss. And lastly, for this video, myth number three, other oxygen therapies are just as good as hyperbaric. In fact, they're actually easier to obtain and less expensive. I'm just going to use those instead. So on that list are quite a few things. EWOT, so exercise with oxygen therapy, ozone therapy, which is a different type of oxygen-related therapy, or oxygen bars, or you know just breathing oxygen, let's say getting a concentrator and a cannula or a mask and just breathing oxygen at the surface. These are all different ways somebody could increase their oxygen levels. And in fact, I hear this so much, we actually made EWOT videos separately, we made ozone videos separately, because I really want people just to understand the differences between the variety of oxygen therapies we have access to. And so in those videos, I'll summarize it here to say the point that I'm trying to get across is that these different oxygen therapies are also terrific, but it's important to recognize that there's different tools for different purposes. And so while I love EWAT and I think it's a terrific tool and I love ozone and breathing oxygen at the surface has value, we have to take a step back and just ask, what's the goal? And then based on whatever the goal is, we can decide which of these therapies might be most appropriate. But to say that EWAT is just a less expensive hyperbaric chamber or ozone is going to create the exact same changes as hyperbaric or breathing oxygen at the surface is less expensive and easier and equally effective as hyperbaric oxygen is just inaccurate. So for more details on the specifics behind the differences between hyperbaric and EWAT or hyperbaric and ozone, please check those videos out. But just understand that hyperbaric is also a very specific and unique therapy. What it does by increasing atmospheric pressure is it drives additional oxygen into our circulation far beyond what any of these other tools can do. Now, there are times where ozone is a better choice. There might be times where EWOT is a better choice. But if the goal is to deliver the highest level of oxygen inside of our bodies for the purposes of healing and regeneration, no tool even comes close to what's possible with the hyperbaric chamber. Like everything else we do in our life, everything else that we do in medicine, it's just all about choosing the right tool for the right outcome. In addition to the video that we did on EWOT and the video that we did on ozone, we also did another video on additional myths around hyperbaric oxygen. So if you haven't seen that one, you can click right here and you can watch that next. So I hope you find these helpful and we'll see you next time.